Hi, I'm Daniel Niohaku Sergal, and I'm glad you're back for your fifth lesson. And uh, let's get right into it. And just one thing I'd like to say is that if you find this too easy, then skip ahead to the lesson called Kurokami, because that's actually the very first level of traditional playing that has gone on for a long, long time. And so what I've been doing with these numbered lessons is giving you a little bit of an intro booklet to the techniques of shakuhachi. So when you sit down with your teacher, he pulls out a traditional piece that koto players, shamisen players, and shakuhachi players can all go and play along with. You'll, you'll have your feet. And uh, this will introduce you, this little book of numbered lessons will introduce you to it, a lot of little techniques that you're going to need as you go along. So um, I'll get started. Now the first thing is watch me point out the notes as we look at the notation and I sing along. And the singing, by the way, is very interesting because why would you sing something that you're going to play on the flute? Well, I just want to get off the, off the main avenue for a minute and think about this. Where does the sound come from? Does it come from, well, it comes from the flute? Well, it comes from your ear. You're hearing the waves of air pressure into your ear. No, it's coming from the mouthpiece. Maybe it's coming from your lungs. No, the traditional belief, it's not coming from your lungs. It's coming from your mind. But how does it get to your mind? It comes through your body. So we're talking about something that grows out of your body into your mind and then you pick up this instrument and you play and you think about it and then you create that sound and out it goes into the world. So it's a little bit of a subtle concept but I thought I would just introduce that because what you have to do with shakuhachi as you probably know is you have to think about what a beautiful sound is like and then reach for it. So you actually have to create these beautiful songs in your mind and these beautiful tones you have to create in your mind before you even get started. So that's where it really comes in handy to listen in high fidelity and try to go to a live shakuhachi concert and hopefully you're in a part of the world where you can get a real teacher and sit down one-to-one -one and just two or three feet away get a real feeling for what the shakuhachi should sound like. And somebody who has played many years on a piece of bamboo will be able to really produce this incredible sound. Now you can get there, of course, by starting on the plastic U flute. Uh, I would also strongly recommend the maple flute, just a nice, soft, natural sound. The first piece we're going to do is, uh, is called The Moon in the Rain. It's Amafuri Otsuki-san. It's one of my favorites. So watch the, uh, watch the notation being uh, tapped up first.
something else I think I should point out. There's a dot here that's a circle. It's a, not a note, it's a circle. What it really is saying is just keep playing the note before it. Like, for example, you can see that there's a su with two dots, and then below it, there's a circle with one dot. So just play the, the three dots together, the, or the three beats together on that su. And the same with the end of the piece. And remember, when you get to that last note of the piece, always try to make that last note extra sweet, and maybe have your lips ready, uh, and just, just fade that out nicely, because people are left with the feeling at the very end of the piece, the way you've brought it all together. Let's go on to the next piece. Hananyome Ningo. This is the, the bride doll, and this is a lot of drama in it, so there's something I should introduce first. It has an introduction, and it has a conclusion. And that's just a little phrase, that's the same exact phrase. But in this notation here, you'll see on the lower left, uh, it's written in small letters. And that doesn't mean play it softly, but there it is, it's tucked in there. And so you play this at the beginning, then you play the piece, and then you play it at the end. So the uh, note you start with is a row. There's a acceleration mark and a deceleration mark. So basically what happens is, you play this ro, ro, su, re, chi, and as you get to the chi, you start playing faster and faster, and then you start slowing it down when you get to the ro, ro, ro at the end. There's a slowdown. So the spreading lines uh, is deceleration. So first we'll sing it together. Ro, ro, su, re, chi, re, chi, re, ro, ro. See that re Mary? It's a re with a Mary, so here's a regular re, Karu head up. And here's a Mary. So there it is. Make sure you reach for that note, bringing your head down as much as you need to, and then pop it right back up for the next note. And uh, it's the re Mary, and uh, on we go to the next piece. There's another piece about a doll. This is the blue eyed doll. So I think you're in the 19th century, and uh, in Japan, dolls show up with those porcelain heads and blue eyes and blonde hair, and uh, it's a sensation. So little girls are very excited about it, and this is a song about that blue-eyed doll. And so first we sing it. Ray chi ray tu ray tu ro ri ri ro tu ray 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 chi ray. To re chi to re ro re 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 to re 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 to re chi chi to re 
kinds of tsus. This is a sukaru. Of course the bottom finger is open, that's a su. Head up. And then there's a su chu meri, which is halfway down to the meri. Chu means middle. And then the full meri, your chin pulled back, or head down. And those are the three meris. Now in this piece, you'll see there's a little slash through the side of the character, through the right side of the character, and that's representing the su meri. And then the su dot, I don't know what to call it, that little mark that makes it a su, on the left side, it's got a little slash through it. That's the su chu meri. So how much hold do you cover to get that? Because your head is up, just like the su, So you'll just have to do it by ear um, until the sound is right. So that's where the practice comes in. Another thing, there's a chi. Here's a chi. There's a chi mary. So I'm shading and dropping my head. That's the chi mary. Uh, give this a try and you'll see there's a little dot. Like I said, the little circle. And what you do is just continue the note that you've been playing. And uh, it doesn't know, it's not always written this way. Different people write music. It's not 100% consistent like in the West. Music is very consistent across each instrument. But uh, you'll find that notation actually is well suited to the shakalaka. Tombo, the red dragonfly. So first we sing it together. So now to play Red Dragonfly, remember to reach for that Su Chu Mary. And the low arc. 
octave. It's the same pitch, just one octave up. Last piece we'll go over in this video is uh, Seven Baby Blackbirds. First we'll sing it and then play it. And as you can see, we're playing it a little bit faster than we're singing it. So that's mostly because I can't sing it so fast. But you know what? Try this with the sound turned off. And when you get to the singing part, replay the video, turn the sound off, and you'll see pointing to the notes. And that would be a good, good starting speed for it. And when you get used to the piece, and you want to play a little normal speed, you can just play along with me, actually. To ro re ro to re chi re re chi re chi re chi re ro So, stay tuned for more videos, and I hope you're enjoying the series. Like I said, if you get bored, skip ahead to some of the more advanced pieces. And if you're not sure what to do, try some of the earlier ones and just look around on my channel, and you'll see the earlier numbers, and that might give you a little bit of a refresher. You might find that the pieces you found difficult before become easier and easier. So, um, that's what this is all about gain proficiency. So good luck with it. Thanks for keeping up with the lessons and uh, good luck with your studies. Bye. If you're getting somewhere with this and if I'm part of you getting somewhere with it, I'll of course accept any kind of uh, contribution to help to keep this effort going. I'm just doing this as a labor of love, knowing that in many parts of the world there are no shakalachi players at all and the best you can do is get something online to, to play and uh, see what's out there on YouTube and try to find a subscription and even that takes a lot of money and uh, takes a lot of time. I thought I'd make it easy and free for anybody to uh, start from zero and bring you up to, you can be a shakalachi player and play for people knowing you are a real player. You can play with other people who are also trained in shakalachi and also you'll be able to play with Koto 
and the shamisen and the traditional music of Japan is mostly wrapped around these three instruments and there are more but these are the three main instruments so this is part of a big tradition and I am really enjoying bringing this tradition to you so uh, your thanks are always appreciated but in either case um, I know what it's like to start with nothing and build it up and so even though it eventually takes a lot of money I think that I'm giving you some shortcuts into how to buy a cheap flute, how to uh, move on, and how to know what you're getting in terms of quality. So you might want to look around some of my videos, help you get started. Thanks a lot. Bye.